Have a go at the size of that crayfish. Each one of these legs is gonna be like a whole meal. But this crayfish, we're not actually gonna get to eat him. Literally traveled a thousand miles. Oh yes! Look at the size of it! And welcome back to another episode. We're out here on the Great Barrier Reef and Fran has hooked a massive fish. Hopefully it's a Spanish mackerel. Whoa! <laughs> yes, Fran! We've got no gaff, so we're just gonna have to tail it, which is always the hardest part with a big mackerel. The big fish! There he is on the surface here. <laughs> it's really, really rough weather, but we're just sick of the wind, so we thought we'd venture out, catch a big fish, and we certainly did that big, big Spanish mackerel. Uh, at our anchorage there, there's another, uh, there's a yacht that's pulled in. His name's Mal, awesome bloke. We're having champagne on the beach with him tonight. And we promised him some fish, so. Um, yeah, and he's got some steak for us, so we're gonna swap him. Beautiful Spanish mackerel for some steak. How cool. Ah, there she is. We've made it back um, to dry land just before lunchtime. It's pretty windy and miserable out there, so we didn't have much footage for you, but this was the highlight of the morning. Big Spanish mackerel. Our newly made mate, Mal, on the yacht out the front here said that he does want a bit of Spanish mackerel, so um, I'm going to knock this fillet off this for him and exchange it for a couple of steaks. You want to try and dry the eggs? Eat the rope? Yeah. Yeah, dry them in salt. Alright. We had the guys in Samoa when we are in the Samoa tour, friend. They yeah. just eat this and just pull it out and just eat it like that. Yeah. And I was trying to like fit in because I was like, oh yeah, I was born in Samoa, I can do that as well. And just tried to eat it and it was like... It puked around. <laughs> oh, it tasted like a fish smoothie. It was so gross. Like a rotten fish smoothie. This is one of the perks about a rough, dodgy filleting job. Is you've got all this beautiful meat. That's the perfect size for our ceviche lunch. Salt in the eggs, eh? Yeah. Quite Put a bit of salt on them. Huh? How long do you reckon we'll leave them for? A day? A couple of days. A couple of days. I think so. Right. Never done it before. Very trial and error, this whole salting of the eggs, but um, we'll keep you posted. Hopefully it turns out. It's so cool. Everyone we've met that's been sort of doing the yacht life are so, so friendly to us. I don't know whether they feel sorry for us in this um, little boat, but um, they've just been so welcoming, brought us on board and shared food with us. And, and Mal is, is obviously um, been around the game for a while. He, he knows like the best currency for people that have been out at sea for a while is a cold drink. So he's bringing in cold champagne and, um, and red meat. We, we just obviously can't catch red meat. So he's bringing in some fine steaks for us. Um, so yeah, we're pretty stoked with that. Final touches of Spanish mackerel sashimi. We're gonna have that around the fire with a couple of sundowners tonight. And there was, he's a bit camera shy, there was a little white tip reef shark swimming around here somewhere. So we've just noticed that this is the first time we've had visitors to our campsite in two months, and we're both very nervous. Uh, Fran's been running around all afternoon, like doing the gardening, like cleaning up the outskirts of the trees and putting away coconut husks and this kind of thing. So um, we've got a little bit of wine to offer them. We've got some coconut. We've tried to clean up the campsite. We're gonna have to kick the fire off there. It's gonna be good. We've got some sashimi. Mal's bringing some champagne and cheese, so it's gonna be a good evening. Got tonight, Fran. Got steak. Steak. I actually killed a goat <laughs> <laughs> on the island. We're very excited about this steak from our mate Mal and salad. I've never been so excited for some greens in my life. Steak, salad, and we do have some corn in the slow cooker in the fire here. Woohoo! We're trying to find about 24 hours as long as we can keep our fillets with no ice. Um, after that, it's best to cook it. So this is the 
the rest of that Spanish mackerel has made it overnight. We're just cooking it up for the brekkie this morning, and this will be our brekkie lunch today. We've got a super low tide today, as you can see, with salty dingo high and dry for a little while. Um, but that is good for one thing, collecting oysters. So we're gonna go for a bit of a walk around the rocks here, around to the next point, and see if we can find some oysters. So we're collecting a few. The way I like doing them is on the fire and actually smoking them open. Gives them a good smoky flavor. But you gotta take a couple to have fresh as well. Like that. Delicious. So good. Throw them in. Good job. Hey, yum, thank you. Fry them off. Oh, we're gonna have to have them fresh, are we? Oh, look at that one, though. Mmm. Mmm. -mm. Big juicy one. <laughs> Just underneath this rock here, there's a, a little stingray hiding. You can see his two barbs coming off. So this here is his tail. And then those two things up there are his barbs. See those two barbs? Pretty cool. Yeah. Perfect. Good job. Let's go get some crayfish. Size of that crayfish. Oh man, they're just such a beautiful animal. Look at the colors on them. But yeah, that's a whopper. That is a jumbo cray. Have a go at his legs there, wrapping around the body. <laughs> Huge, and each one of these legs is going to be like a whole meal of meat. So good. But this crayfish, we're not actually going to get to eat him. We're going to swap him for a couple of steaks from a mate, Mal. So um, that's his kayak in here on the beach. He's gone for a little walk and we're just gonna leave this under his seat and he's gonna bring in some steaks later. So, that's so cool. Whew. Leave him in there for our mate Mal. He's gonna get the best surprise when he comes back to his kayak. It's another one of the things I love about out here on the islands is this culture of just like, um, money isn't really a priority. It's all kind of like either food or a nice wine or a cold drink or um, different supplies and then people just kind of trade with each other. So um, yeah, that crayfish is getting turned into a couple of steaks. Red meat is obviously very hard to find for us out here. So can't wait for that. It's gonna be unbelievable. We've got a couple of oysters as well. So I'm thinking oyster entree, steak, main meal. Yes, it's a good day. You would have seen that area we were looking for the crayfish, only pretty shallow water, um, you know, up to five, six meters deep, and just looking under what we call big pumpkin bombies. They look like a big pumpkin, and um, up underneath them, they've got like these hollow caves. That's obviously where the crayfish like to, like to hang out. He saw that one today, he's really, really deep. So, now I do like grabbing them, I do enjoy grabbing them, but we're allowed to take a spear gun in Queensland, so I do take a spear gun in in case they're really deep like that one. What you want to look for, you see if their tail is curled up underneath themselves, it means they're carrying eggs. But that um, that big daddy long leg cray there, I could see he was all spread out, so he was fair game. That's, um, that's why the spear gun came into action there. But for now, we've got some Spanish mackerel cooked this morning. Ready to go, it's time to eat. Uh-oh. Have to go around this one. Ooh. Oysters are getting their revenge on me now.
check out the sun poking its head down into the horizon. I might try the old zoom on this camera. So that's the sun setting on another awesome day. It's sort of two months into the trip, a few things are breaking down, namely charging devices are breaking. Um, so that's why we haven't had the cameras rolling all day. We're just kind of picking select times. And also the whole center console of my boat is broken. So today, a lot of the day was spent um, under the console trying to fix the boat. And I'm sure you guys don't want to see that sort of shit. It's not very fun work. Um, but anyway, it's not all doom and gloom. We caught some crayfish and we've got them sitting there. When we rescued Jimmy, the cray fisherman, he, um, he gave us some butter. Out of all things, he offloaded to us as a thank you present. Gave us a couple of beers, which was awesome. Um, and, and a frozen block of butter to keep the beers cold. So that butter is going straight on top of these crayfish. Um, garlic, butter, straight on the fire. We're gonna have a hell of a feast. So we're gonna do the craze. The best way, I'm sure you guys have seen this before now. Cut the crayfish in half, butterfly it open, and then you can load it up with garlic, butter, and cook it sunny side up on the fire so all the juices stay in. We're really getting a bit stylish tonight. We've got a pan on the fire, so that's kind of a, um, a bit of a luxury for us. We don't only have oil, but we've, we've managed to scab a little bit of that. So we're gonna do onion, sweet potato chips. Over here, crayfish, um, they're ready for the grill. So 20 minutes out, we'll throw them on. I can hear a bit of noise. It sounds like the onions need to go on. Let's do it. And bon appetit. Here is maybe, maybe my favorite meal that we've prepared on tour. So here we go, big crayfish there and garlic butter. We've got the cray tail with onion and sweet potato fries. Right, check out him, the star of the show. Fresh as it gets. Mm -hmm. 